Hello, today we're going to talk about cross-platform, cross-platform snippet management. Um, as I'm again in a mixed environment now with Windows, no, Windows, there's no Windows here, I don't know why I said that, with Mac and Linux. Um, I need uh, snippets, I normally stored them in say Alfred originally, then in, um, what is it, Raycast, uh, and I just really need them everywhere. I need them on both platforms because I don't take my laptop and work and actually work at my laptop at this station as well. I'm with my Multigen 3 monitors now. Um, and I'll do a video on that at some point. But I can switch between my Mac and my Linux laptop, which is right in front of me really easily. And so we'll, I want to be able to do basically all the same stuff on each platform. So we're going to talk about that today with Espanso. Do the basics of it. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Number two, uh, take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. And if you're on Skillshare, you can take my courses there too. You can find them below. Well, that's it. Let's dive into Espanso. So this is Espanso. It is a cross-platform uh, snippet manager. So you can see it says get started on Mac OS, also available on Windows and Linux. And I've installed this on Mac OS currently. Now, the best way to do it that I found, um, or that I chose to use, we switch over to terminal, I'm just gonna open up a new one because I've already done this, is to use uh, two commands, and the two commands are uh, with homebrew. This is what I prefer. There is an image as well, uh, if you just wanna download a standard DMG like you see in most Mac applications, but I prefer the homebrew method because then I can script my entire computer setup um, from scratch with homebrew. So it's brew tap spanso spanso. I do that. I've already done it. I don't need to. And I hit enter. It'll set up the tap. So set up the new repository, the source for you. And then you type brew install spanso, and then follow the directions. So if you don't want to do that, you can just download the DMG. It's available for Apple Silicon and for Intel still. So next up, the thing to do is to start your configuration. So you've set this up. On Mac OS, you are going to have to go in and do your security stuff. So under settings, right, our system, system settings, you go in and look at your security. Uh, where is it? Accessibility. And you got to activate it in your accessibility. So it does prompt you for all these things as you do your setup. It's a really easy setup. You don't really need to worry uh, about it. It's just your standard uh, allowing it to access your system stuff. Next up, we need to configure it. And so the fastest way to do that, if you're comfortable with terminal, because if you've done the brew method, you would be, is to type espanso path. And then it tells, oh, it's not in there because I spelled it wrong. Espanso path. There you go. So now it tells me where all my configurations are. And the one I'm really uh, interested in is right here. Lab library applications support Espanso. So that's where I'm actually going to go in to edit my configuration to add my new um, paths to it, my new, sorry, my new snippets to it so that I can uh, have new fill in snippets. So I can kill that for now and come in here. And that's what we're looking at right here. So this is NeoVim and NVim because I'm comfortable with it. And this is the basic uh, configuration of it. So you have a config right here with our default config, right? I'm not gonna play with any of these today, but this is a big whole bunch of configura configuration you can do to customize the Spanso to how you like it. And then we have our matches, all right? There's packages in there I have not installed and then the base YAML file that does our matches. So that's what we're gonna play with today. You can see I've already added a few. I've added a span, so I always like the double semicolon in front because you're never going to type double semicolon. And I left A to do for Obsidian. So if I was to type what will be my snippet, OBS, I get nothing. But if I come in here, and this is YAML, so we go two spaces for YAML, trigger, double quote, e, oh, double quote, double semicolon. OBS, all right, quote, replace, double quote, obsidian. Okay, so I do something now, it won't work, but if I save, this is live reload. So now if I type OBS, it replaced it for me. Now there's also a search. So I don't have a lot of snippets yet, but if I do have a lot of snippets, then uh, I would wanna do search. To do that, I would hit Alt, Space, and I can actually start typing through, right? So I could type Obsidian, or I could type Devon Think is another one I have, and I have two. Now I could type Alt, 
just the option on Mac OS that I'm on right now, one or alt two to get that. So this will come in handier and you can also see um, in Espanso right here, it's already got one plugin that does date. So if I type um, double curly, like curly braces, or sorry, date, it'll actually replace it with the date of the day. So what today is, so we can try that here. So if I go insert mode, date, now it did the date for today. You can change your formatting with that under the configuration if you want. Now I don't love it like that, so I'm actually gonna go, there you go, double date. And it also has another example in here of how to output a shell command, which I am not gonna get into now. We will do an advanced um, configuration setup on Espanso at some point when I do get more into it. So we have search and then syncing Espanso. So if you noticed when I was in uh, Vim, if I go, back, you can see I have a git folder. So what I did to sync this is I just took my library application support Espanso and added it to git. So when it's in git, I can create a re private repository on GitHub for myself, and then I can clone it into all of my other computers. That means I just have it everywhere by doing a git pull, git push to make sure I've pushed things around. That's it, that works for me because I use Git all the time. So this is a fairly standard tool for me to use. If you're not comfortable with Git, you may not love that idea as a way to sync your repository. Um, really, if you can get it linked in any way, so with a sim link or other things out to any type of sync service, then you should be good. That's it, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell, YouTube will let you know something happened. Otherwise, take a course, curtismckale.ca slash education, become a member, curtismckale.ca slash membership. Um, head over to Skillshare to take a course as well. That's it, have an awesome day.